Hello, Carl. Uh, this is the testing of your Toyota Crown 3UZ VVTi going into an IS200 plug and play and using the six speed automatic gearbox on your Crown. Right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the harness, show you everything that's going on inside there, show you the layout of the harness so you can see where everything goes around the engine and where it all attaches to, just so you, from memory. All right, <clears throat> then we're going to go through and we're going to carry out a whole bunch of tests. Just a pre-warning, uh, with autos, it does take quite a while. We've got a lot of gearbox wiring to go through. It is all plug and play, so it's nothing major you have to do on your side, but I've just got to go through everything so you know what's going on. Right, so inside the ECU box, we've obviously replaced the grommet with the proper one to go into the IS200 box from the Crown one. You've got your five plugs going into your ECU. You've got your resin um, patch that's going to go to your two original IS200 plugs there. And in your case, we've only got that plug and that plug. We don't use the blue one because that's only related to a manual gearbox. There's no wiring in there for an auto at all, okay? Because the Crown works on CAN data, not on um, uh, MPX or whatever, the older style of Toyota one, we've got this box to convert the CAN to MPX for the vehicle so all the gauges work. Also, because it runs on CAN, it doesn't use the K-line communication or SIL is the name of the pin that it communicates on. We fitted an OBD2 connector inside the ECU box so you can interface with the ECU. Obviously, there is no allocated wiring in the IS200 to operate by a CAN. All right, so that's all inside there. So basically, five plugs there, two plugs there, two plugs on the body. Tuck these away. You'll see the photos at the end of what it looks like when I've tucked everything away. And then obviously, the crown has a little bit of extra length, so we've made it so that you can push the little extra length of the harness down inside there. You just have to remove this blue blue plug out the way, it just unclips there and you can just push it down underneath and then the harness can go in there. Right, so coming out of the harness, it's really, really straightforward. It's just the original one to this rubber grommet, down into the little plastic bit that bolts on there and there. Out of here, coming out the front, you've got your oil um, control valve for your VVTi and then you've got the rest of the harness section that runs down the front there, which we'll get to in a minute. But over here, you'll see there's wires coming out and that's for your coil one, so remember, this is the left bank, so it's one, three, five, and seven. This is the right bank, so it's two, four, six, and eight, okay? So, back to here. So coming out of here is coil one and injector one, which you can see underneath there. Then it comes around here, it goes into another piece of plastic that gets bolted on there and there. And then the first breakout you see over here, it's got three coming out. You've got injector three, coil three, and you've got your cam sensor for your left bank over there. All right. Coming further along, we've got another breakout over there. You've got your injector five, your coil five, and then you've also got your, this little plug, which is gonna plug into a little suppressor that bolts on, I think, here on the engine itself. And that's gonna plug straight into there. We've removed the EVAP, so you had like a little solenoid here that can be just got rid of. We've remounted out of the ECU. There's no EVAP there at all, so you can get rid of that. Then coming further along to here, then we've got another breakout coming out of the back here, down to here, and that is your coil, uh, coil seven and injector seven. All right, coming over the top of the fuel pulsation damper into your piece of plastic at the back here. Now that bolts on down there and over there, only two bolts that are there. And coming out of here, so starting down here is where all your gearbox wiring goes. You've also got your lambda sensor. Now there is a metal shield that goes between the exhaust and there. You must fit that back on, otherwise this plug's gonna last all of five seconds with the heat from the exhaust, which is gonna completely destroy it in a matter of no time at all. We've also got the earth coming out there, which is gonna bolt to the back of the cylinder head with the M6 bolt. You've got the pedal plug, which is coming out here, and then it's another sort of 70 centimeters to the pedal over there. So that's obviously gonna go inside your vehicle. And this is your pedal, obviously, we'll send with the harness. And then coming further along here, you've got your plug, which is going to go down to your sub harness. So this is your actual sub harness now. Now inside there, you've got your knock sensors and you've got your starter motor. I have taken a photo, so if you wait till the end, you'll see what it looks like underneath. The plugs are two different colors. So look at the photo and you'll see which one is where, but they are two different lengths as well. So you kind of can't fit the wrong one on the wrong one. But anyway, the photos are there to show you. All right. There's your main power starter cable. So at the moment, I've just got it hooked up to here. Yours came with just a frayed end, so I've just quickly pushed that together just to get it to work so we can start it over here. Coming further along, you'll see there's a little earth strap coming out here, which again bolts onto your cylinder head with a little M6 bolt over there. So not the big M8, it's the M6 one at the top. 
coming along to here, then you're going to break out for injector 8 and coil 8. You're going to come further along here, then it's going to break out for your ACIS plug, your coil 6, and then your injector 6 is underneath there. Coming further along, we're going to break out again, and then we're going to have your injector 4. We're going to have your cam sensor, which is underneath there, and then we're going to come down to your coil 4. Now, I can't put the air box too high up because the MAF wiring is a bit shorter standard, so I'm going to kind of try and see if I can get in here. But you're going to come along here, and it's going to break out over here at the end. Then you've got injector 2. You've got coming down to coil 2. And then coming over this side, you've got your oil control valve. And then I'm going to try and see if I can get in the top here, but there's your coolant temp sensor, which plugs straight in. And then there's your plug for your throttle motor. That all comes out at the end there. Then it keeps coming down here, then it breaks out here for your mass airflow sensor, so that's over there. Then we come down to here, and then we've got your alternator plug and your lambda sensor plug. Obviously I haven't got a crown alternator with the 4 pin plug on, so I've just adapted it here. But your alternator has the 4 pin plug like that, and it's completely controlled via the ECU. Okay, So I've just made a little adaption here to make it work. So it works in this situation, so we can see everything is fine. Right, so coming around the front here, <clears throat> so you can see we've got a little breakout over here. You've got your oil control valve coming out there. It then comes down there, it breaks out and goes to your cam sensor over there. If you take a look at the engine, you'll see there's little holes here and here. And the harness then clips into place on those two little holes. Sorry, get that out the way. Then it comes down to here and then it breaks out for an aircon pump. Now the aircon pump on your crown, okay, is not suitable. You're going to need to get an aircon pump from either an LS400 um, 1UZ VVTI, uh, so that's 98-2000, or a GS400 98 to all the way to 2005, because it was a one. If it was American, it was a 1UZ VVTI 98-2000. If it's European, it's 2000-2005, and that had a 3UZ. Or you can also use the SC because they had this little triangular plug for the AC. Okay. So the AC does work, but you need the correct pump for it. So when it breaks off down here, it then also goes down inside here, underneath here, and then it goes to your crank plug, which is over there. And then in your case, you're gonna have the oil filter housing that goes out the back. So you've got your little oil pressure switch over there, but that'll come out there and then plug in over there. Okay? So that's the entire harness, how it's laid out, how everything works. So hopefully it's not too difficult to get it in. Each individual section is broken out in sections. So you're obviously going to be able to put the right injector and the right coil in the right place because they have individual breakouts. Same on this side over here. So it's hopefully not too difficult to do. Right. Okay. So getting on to what we're going to be testing today. As I said, with an auto, there's quite a few things that we are going to test. So we're going to start off by turning the ignition on. That's going to then show us the ambient temperature. We're going to be able to use the dash to see the charge light and the oil pressure light. We're then going to use the power and snow mode button inside the car and looking on the dash to make sure that it's activating as it should be. We're then going to go through the uh, selector here to put it into reverse and you'll see the gear indication of reverse will pop up over there. Then we've got the OBD2 test. So in other words, what we're doing is just plugging in the OBD2 to the OBD4 there and we're making sure we can read all the data, which is fine. Then we're going to go through the gear selector here and I'll explain a bit more in detail about how that's going to work. <coughs> And we're going to go through all the gears on there and it's going to appear on here. So I'm using an IS300 cluster because it's the only one I've got that's got all the automatic um, gearboxes on there. So you can see where, what gear it's in. Obviously, you've got an IS200 auto. So you'll have all of that screen over there. My manual one doesn't. So it's completely useless. Okay. Uh, shifter wiring. We're going to go through that because there's obviously there's manual mode. There's shift up, shift down. But we're going to go through all of that. So I'm not going to go into too much detail now. We're going to go through the fuel pump relay, so obviously your ECU controls the fuel pump, so we'll show you how that all works. Then we're going to look at the AC clutch, so we're going to obviously press the AC button inside the car and you're going to hear the, the relay click and then obviously when we actually start the engine I'll press the AC button again and you'll actually hear the revs go up, you know, like to pick up because the AC is on. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start it and then it's going to affirm that the starter is working and we'll do the thing where we'll go from park to neutral, park to reverse and try and start it so it doesn't start. Okay, then we're going to go obviously come back and we're going to look at the tax signal. So we'll make sure that there's a tax signal coming through there. This device converts it from a four cylinder to a six cylinder. So obviously the, it'll have the correct RPM through there. 
Then we'll look at the coolant temp. Obviously, I've been running it for a while, so hopefully it stayed up to temp a little bit. Then we're going to look at the ACIS valve, and that's this little valve at the back, so we're going to make sure that we've got there. Um, I did uh, go through your little harness, which is also in here for the ACIS, and I replaced the plug on the other side because that one was broken. Then we're going to test the drive-by wire, so that's going to be as simple as revving the engine, nice and easy. Then we're going to test the VVTi solenoids on the diagnostic machine. So what it's going to do is it's going to retard the cam, so it's going to sound really lumpy, and I'm going to go bank one, bank two, and you're going to see it's going to do it both times. That confirms everything on the VVTI system is working as it should. Then we're going to go through the injectors and coils and I'm going to unplug one at a time. Boom, boom, boom. And you're going to hear it misfiring on each cylinder. It's a fully sequential injection and ignition engine. So as soon as I unplug an injector, if it starts misfiring and plug it back in and it stops misfiring, we know the coil and the injector works. Um, then we're going to go on and we're going to look at the codes. Obviously, there's going to be some codes related to the automatic gearbox because I haven't got a, a six-speed gearbox to bolt on the back and actually plug everything in and make sure that's working but that's fine um, and then that's it basically so first thing we're going to do is again nice and easy it is plug and play so you're going to come into your vehicle you're going to put the ignition on you're going to come here you're going to see all your lights are working your battery light your oil light the check engine light works but caveat with the six speeds they're not designed to power an incandescent bulb which is what these have okay I've not replaced that with an LED bulb simply so I can show you guys what happens. But I would suggest that you basically replace the coolant test. I'm just going to turn my little spotlight off here. You can see it's there, but it's very dim. So if you compare it to that bright, that's very dim. So first thing I would do is I suggest you replace at least the check engine light with the LED and then it'll be absolutely fine. It'll be bright. No problem at all. It powers LEDs. No worries. Okay. So we've done charge light, oil pressure. Let's go over and we'll do the ambient temp sensor. So as you can see, it's displaying 11 degrees outside. So that is working exactly as it should. Now bear in mind that is a physical sensor that's on the front of your vehicle. In our case, it's just dangling over here for now, but this is actually bowl clipped under the crash bar that goes along here. So just make sure that is there intact and plugged in. Otherwise you're not gonna get the ambient temperature there. All right, so now we're going to go look at the power and snow mode. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this around. Ooh. And I've had to make a little adaption on the IS200 manual because it doesn't have power mode. It's only got snow mode. But when I press power mode, you'll see power mode activates. Turn it off, goes off. Press snow, snow mode activates. Press it, it goes off. Okay, so power mode, snow mode. Everything is working exactly as it should, so that's absolutely fine. Then we're gonna go into reverse now, so I'm just gonna quickly go over to here and I'm gonna stick it at the moment. It is in park, as you can see. It's in park. If I turn the shifter, now we're in reverse. All right, so that all works absolutely fine. So what we'll do is we'll go through the rest of the gear selector wiring while we're there. So you can see we were in, let's go back to park. So all I'm doing is I'm just turning this little shifter which would be on your gearbox itself. So we're in park, we're in reverse, we're in neutral, and we're in drive. Okay, so just to remember, the six speed doesn't have the other gear. So if you're using your original shifter, which is absolutely fine, you can. But just remember, you're only gonna have park, reverse, neutral, and drive, okay? We have wired in S or manual mode, okay? So when you're in drive, when you push it through, it used to be three. When you push it to the side, it's going to put the ECU into sports or manual mode. Okay, so that will show you in a minute as we go through there, but I'll do it through this section over here and I'll check on the dash as well. But basically, nice and simple. We're going to make our way down to reverse, neutral, and drive. And I'm just going to bridge this wire over here. And you'll see that manual is now lit up. Okay. So obviously in your physical um, IS200, you don't have manual there. You have basically three. Okay. So when you go from D to three, three will light up, but it's actually in like sport slash manual mode. All right. What we've also done for you is effectively we've added the shift up, shift down wires to this little separate dongle. Now, 
separate plug, sorry. On the IS200, there is no native wires for shift up, shift down. Not to say they can't be added, because obviously you can get an IS300 setup and you can put the steering wheel and the clock spring on there, and then you can put the wires in, and then you can add it onto there. So if you do decide to do that, I can go through it with you and explain exactly how you're gonna connect those two wires. But it's super simple. Those wires and the other side goes to ground. So that's really, really simple. If you wanna put another steering wheel on with paddle shifters or whatever, and no problem at all. You're just gonna have these wires going inside the vehicle. Well, inside the vehicle and obviously your left-hand drive, so it's nice and easy, it's right there. And then basically to the paddle shifters, through the clock spring, one side to earth, other side to these two, and there you go, okay? So, I'm gonna quickly go into the OBD2. So obviously you can see that we can see all of the live data there. We've got 58 degrees, so we should see that, yep, there you go. You can see the temperature gauge is working absolutely fine. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually go into the system select, and you'll see we're picking up that it is a Toyota Crown. We're gonna go into the gearbox for now. So obviously these are completely separate. You've got engine and gearbox. We're gonna go into data list. <clears throat> Just gonna get a little key to make my life easier to go up and down. But yeah, so we're just gonna come in here and now we're gonna be able to see when we're having shift up and shift down. So you see there we got sports shift up, we got sports shift down and we got sports mode selection. So you can see now it's saying we're in D because that is on, which is indicated by the dash as well. So that's all funky. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into sports mode which in your case would be flicking from D to three. So now you'll see it says sports mode selection is now on. And you can see in this particular case, we've got manual lit up because it's a nice 300 clocks. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to going to short this out to earth, okay? So you can see I've got my plug here. I'm gonna go into this pin, which should be shift down. And your ECU case is on earth, so I'm just gonna hold it on there. So if you're looking at shift down, on, on. And then I'm gonna switch the wires around here. Let me just get a better sign. Okay, so that should be shift up. Let's see, there you go. Okay. Okay, so that is working exactly as we would expect it. I'm just gonna pull that out there quickly. It's gonna take us out of manual mode and now we're gonna go into park. Okay, so hopefully that explains everything. There's nothing really to do on your side. This will all just plug in. You can put it into drive, you can go over to sports mode, you obviously just can't shift up and down with the IS200, so there's not really much point in doing that because once you go into sports mode, it'll put it in a gear, and unfortunately it's gonna stick in that gear unless you can shift up or down. So for now, until you wire in the shift up, shift down, and put a different steering wheel and all of that in, you're just gonna go park, reverse, neutral, drive, okay? Everything else is gonna work, power mode, snow mode, all of that type of jazz, but yeah, just for that for now, okay? so. Fuel pump relay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back into our engine on our diagnostic machine. Right, back into engine. Now we're gonna go onto active test. And we're gonna go into fuel pump. Enter. Let's wait for it to load. And you can hear the relay click. And you can hear the pump running over there. Okay, so that's fine. Like I said, the ECU is controlling the fuel pump. That's all working exactly as we should. Next up, we're gonna go onto AC clutch. So when I press the AC button on the dash, you can actually hear the relay clicking. All right. So that's, again, communicating through the CAN to MPX device. MPX signal sent for AC request, sent over to the 3UZ ECU, and it's activating everything as it should do. Or it's all controlled in by this device here. So this is also taking the pressure signal in. So your pressure signal that's over here, the pressure has to be correct, otherwise that will not allow the AC to engage. So just remember that, but it is controlled by the box over there. 
Okay, so I think we've gone through everything over there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into starting, but just to show you obviously that the neutral start switch does work exactly as you would intend it to do. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna shift from park into reverse, all right? I'm gonna go to my key and you'll see no start. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna put it into park and then we're gonna start. So I'm gonna get my headphones on just cause it's very, very loud. But just a quick recap. So we're gonna obviously start it up. That's gonna show that the start is working. We're gonna come around here, show that the clocks are working so you can see the taco signal. Coolant temp, we've kind of already looked at, but we'll go again, but you can see it over there. It is actually working. It's above the needle over there. We're gonna come over to the engine here. We're gonna check the ACIS valve. So that should do that after I start it. We know it's all good. We're gonna test the drive-by-wire pedal. So I'm just gonna give the engine a bit of a rev. Okay. And then we're gonna test the VBTR solenoids via the machine. We're gonna go around and we're gonna unplug all the injectors one by one to make sure they're all working. And then we'll come back and we'll show you that we've got only codes related to the automatic gearbox. And that's because obviously the solenoid and everything is unplugged. All right. So let me put my ear defenders on. Okay. So now we come over here. Easy to talk like that right so with the six speeds the engine and the gearbox completely separate software so on this particular side you can see we've got zero codes so that means obviously you can see we've remapped out the secondary lambda sensors so that's the lambda sensors that obviously after the catalytic converters so they're no longer needed you're not going to get a check engine light for that and obviously everything else is absolutely fine then what we're going to do is we're going to go into system select now we're going to go to ECT Electronically controlled transmission. We're going to go into DTC there. And you'll see basically there it is. So that's just because your solenoid plug isn't plugged in. But everything else is absolutely fine. Because obviously we plugged everything else in. Alright. So, relatively straightforward. Hopefully you know exactly where everything is going to go now. So that shouldn't be a problem for you. 
What do you need to do on your side once you're there? Number one, you're gonna have to either extend or put an end on this to take it off the battery. You'll see that I've bought this out coming this way because obviously your left hand drive. So your battery's over here on the right hand side of the engine, okay? The other thing you're gonna have to add on is your alternator main wire. So that's gonna go from the alternator. Come over here and it's gonna bolt into your fuse box. Obviously your fuse box is over there. But it looks exactly the same and the alternator bolts in over there. So there to alternator, that to the positive post of your battery terminal. Again, yours will be on that side. And then your earth that goes from the battery underneath bolts to the chassis goes down you then bolt that onto the block so that goes directly to the block of the engine then what you're going to do is you should or might have this little earthing point over here with a little bolt in it you can take a little earth scrap from there if you still got the one from your 1g brilliant just use it so it's going to go straight from there and you can either attach it here or attach it here so these are little m8 holes over here you can see i've got a little bolt in there just m8 holes and you can take it on there okay so, again, really nice and simple. Engine harness makes a U-shape, drops on, bolts on, everything plugs in. You're gonna run down the front, you're gonna run down the side, you're gonna plug in your mass airflow sensor. ECU box, plug everything in. I've got the photos of what it looks like when it's all tucked away nicely, so you can see exactly what it should look like when it's in your actual vehicle itself. You're gonna add the starter motor, starter wire. You're gonna add the alternator wire. You're gonna add the earth to the block and you're gonna add that earth onto the cylinder head. There should be another earth on the gearbox from there to the chassis. If you still got that, brilliant, put it back in, no problem at all. Don't forget the shield that goes between the exhaust and that plug over there. Otherwise that plug is not gonna last very long. It's gonna get super hot and it's gonna either melt or it's going to just get extremely brittle incredibly quickly, okay? You've got your harness that goes underneath there. This is your actual one. It goes to your two knock sensors and that, so you do have to take your inlet manifold off, okay? Little trick, you don't need to actually separate the manifold here where these bolts are here. You don't need to separate it. You've literally only got one, two, three, four, and five. So you've got five bolts on this side, You've got five bolts on that side and then the whole intake comes off complete. So you don't have to separate it. The whole intake comes off complete. And then you can take care of all the stuff underneath like the knock sensor wires and all of that. And then you can put the intake back on again and that should be absolutely fine. And then off you go. All right, so please let us know when you wanna do this. Obviously, we've got everything here, so if you want to go ahead and do that, we'll try and help you as best we can. Um, obviously, if you then want to change over from IS300 clocks, as I've clearly demonstrated, you just plug them in and everything will work exactly as you see here. Don't forget that you don't have anything after drive. You've got park, reverse, neutral, and drive, and that is it. The shifter will not go down to 2 and L. You'll only be able to access those lower gears or stay in them if you connect the manual up. Otherwise, you're just going to have to go park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And that's it. All right. And if anybody else has any other questions you'd like to ask, please feel free to either leave a comment. We try and get them as, quick, as much as we can. But there is someone now dedicated to answering messages on our Facebook page. So please feel free to message there. You should get through to somebody. And that's just Phoenix Engine Management on Facebook. Uh, if we do, I do look at the comments every time we upload, so if you do put a comment down, it'll only be when we upload that I'll probably take a look at it and try and answer it for you as best I can. But that should be it. So Carl, hopefully this is really nice and super easy for you to install with no real dramas. So we'll get this boxed up. We've got your sump on the way, so hopefully that'll be with us maybe tomorrow or the next day, and we'll get this off to Iceland uh, so you can get it back in your vehicle and you can get rock and rolling. All right, but thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.